Donald Trump, as I was just saying, is the gift that keeps on giving for the world's media. He's been urged to pull out of the presidential race in light of some of his recent comments, uh, but remarkably, he's still polling high, well and truly above everyone else, and is uh, talking tough. Joining us now is US correspondent Sandy Hughes. Sandy, um, let's go straight in on uh, on Donald Trump, um, because the poll numbers are extraordinary. There is so much bad press around him, and yet his poll figures have grown. Well, you know, Paul, uh, Paul, the latest polling numbers that show him at 24 percent, which is, you know, twice uh, as much as his closest, uh, the, the closest person after him, which is uh, Paul Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, that the poll was taken actually before all of this kerfluffle with uh, Senator John McCain. So we're going to probably see in the next few days another poll taken and see if uh, this talk about John McCain not truly being, uh, you know, a war hero, we're going to see if this fight with John McCain is going to impact his polling numbers. But I tell you, as you said, he's the gift who keeps on giving. This morning, um, Senator Lindsey Graham went on American television and called uh, Donald Trump a jackass and said he needs to shut up. Well, probably an hour later at Trump's next campaign uh, event, he gave out Lindsey Graham's cell phone number, uh, calling him an idiot to his crowd. I mean, it it just keeps keeps going. And the beneficiary of all this, obviously, is... Yeah, Go ahead, sorry. Did, did he say, you know, this, this, he, he criticized the guy, called him an idiot, and said, here's his phone number if you want to ring him? <laughs> Yes, and he and encouraged his supporters to ring him. So a, a, a reporter actually got through uh, in the middle of all this, and Graham was just astounded. He said, you know, uh, the bottom line is that what Graham is saying is the beneficiary of all of this mess is uh, President Obama and, and Hillary Clinton. And, of course, the thing is, I mean, he seems to grow in strength as a result of all of this criticism. On Monday evening, the Des Moines Register, on its front page, uh, called him a feckless, blowhard and self-absorbed B-list celebrity. <laughs> well, I've also heard him called the bloviator, but, you know, I don't even want to go down that path. But you're right, the editorial uh, in the Des Moines Register, which is, you know, um, a, a very well-known uh, newspaper, very well-respected newspaper, that editorial asked him to get out of the race. Uh, Senator Graham is saying, you know, I'm not asking him to get out of the race. I'm just telling him to shut up and, you know, to, to, to let's put our eyes back on what's important uh, and not, you know, worry about what yeah. Donald Trump is going to say next, but it just keeps going. All right, we'll keep following this because it is it is absolutely fascinating. I think he's in a position whereby he can't possibly win because, you know, people either love him or they hate him, and so many people hate him, he could never get across the line. But anyway, we'll talk about it again, uh, obviously, next week. Um, the Aurora Theatre shooter <laughs> um, is in court, James Holmes, mm. and it is thought that the only thing that will save him from the death penalty is the uh, uh, pleading insanity. Well, um, that that is the thought, but he pled insanity during the guilt phase of the mm. trial, and that that did not in any way persuade the jurors. Um, he has been diagnosed as a schizophrenic, but the jurors still believed uh, in the guilt and innocence phase that um, that didn't matter. He still knew what he was doing. Mm. Um, and so what we're hearing is that the defense is really going to try to humanize him. That's obvious. There's al- already been a videotaped um, uh, interview with one of his teachers, his fifth grade teacher, who called him a productive, pleasant student. His parents will probably take the stand. Uh, they're going to talk about his, uh, you know, his lifelong complication with mental illness, and they're going to really try to, um, you know, make him as human as possible. Mm, that is not going to be an easy sell. Um, all right, finally, um, no. Katy Perry versus the nuns. Uh, so she has now offered uh, ten <laughs> million in cash for this uh, convent. Now, no one is in the convent. Um, the church want her to have it. It's just this group of, of nuns badgering her all the time. Well, the the problem is that the archdiocese of of Los Angeles, they feel like they have the ability to sell this property, that they own it, and they should be able to sell it to her for multi-millions of dollars. But these nuns, who are the last nuns who actually live there, say, no way, we're not having Katy Perry and a bunch of rock and roll parties in the mother house. I mean, what a disgrace. But really, it probably comes down to money, because the nuns say they've already put together a deal, that they've already sold the place to a real estate developer. And... um, um, the, the, the funny part of this is that Katy Perry actually met with the nuns. Uh, you know, she grew up an evangelical Christian. Uh, she met with the nuns. She tried to persuade them. She sang them a gospel song. But it was a sour note, obviously, for the nuns because they're still saying no way.
Excellent, Sandra. We will follow that story as well. We need Donald Trump in there to sort that one out. Sandra Hughes, our US correspondent. <laughs>